Well, good afternoon, everyone. Pastor Corey Rowland here with Yorksville First, Pleasant Grove, and Tippecanoe United Methodist Church, bringing you another section of our podcast. Now, this one is, remember, a continuation of what we talked about last week, and we're still kind of encompassing our discussion on the year of Jubilee and the sabbatical year. Uh, Last week, if you remember, we talked about two important laws that relate to the year of Jubilee. That was the law of the title deed and the law of the kinsman redeemer. Now, just to kind of clarify what those two laws mean, again, the law of the title deed, this was basically set up to ensure that the original owner always got back his property. As you all know what a title deed is, I'm sure it's uh, basically proof of ownership of something. And so this title deed for Israel, they had two title deeds. Remember, the sealed and the unsealed one. The sealed title deed was the official document. This was the one that always remained with the original owner. He always had that in his hand. The unsealed one was given out when he, remember, you could sell your property for a time until the year of Jubilee, then you got it back. Well, the unsealed deed would be who you would give that out to to show proof that they have control of it for a temporary time. But remember, complete and total ownership always remained with the one who has the sealed title deed. And so those that's the that's kind of the law or the custom surrounding the title deed. And then second and also very important, and we discussed the law of the kinsman redeemer. And so this was that this was the law that before a person even put up their land for sale, their closest kin, their closest relative was to buy back that land. And they were to buy back that land and give it to the original owner. They would redeem them. They would redeem their land. And they wouldn't keep it for themselves. They would give it back to their original owner. And again, that is the law of the kinsman redeemer. And we talked about how we saw that played out in Ruth. And so the Bible does talk about that law. However, the exact law of the kinsman redeemer is not really found in Scripture. There's little references to it. But the law is discussed in much greater detail in the Pentateuch which is a Hebrew book that is held right up there with the Old Testament that the, that the Jewish people use for Judaism. So while we see reference to both the title deed and the kinsman redeemer discussed in Scripture, and we, we see it, that the actual law is found in the Pentateuch, which is not part of our Bible. It's, it's an extra book that the Jewish people use. It's kind of their book of religion and their book of rule. But again, the kinsman redeemer, he was to buy back the property, the kinsman redeemer was also the one who would go and buy back people who sold themselves into slavery. You know, he would redeem his kin from slavery. He would redeem his land. And then also the kinsman redeemer was the one who was supposed to avenge the death of a relative. If a relative died and there was nobody to avenge his death, the kinsman redeemer was to step up and go and avenge that person's death. And so the, the, that's a very important. Both these laws are very important. We see them both played out in scripture. And so what I want to do now is I want to show you how these laws point us to Christ and how Christ fulfilled both of them. And I want to start our discussion again back in the book of Luke. This is, you know, where we left off last week when we began. It's, you know, Jesus begins his public ministry in Luke 4. And so I want to I, I want to start there because this will be a great launching pad to discuss how Jesus fulfilled these laws that we've talked about. So Luke 4 And let's begin in verse 16. And it says, When he came to the village of Nazareth, his boyhood home, he went as usual to the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read the scripture. The scroll of Isaiah the prophet was handed to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was. this was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that the captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. Now, so far, as we discussed last week, nothing strange has gone on here. Rabbis, which Jesus was a rabbi, would often be called upon to read the scriptures in the temple. They would always stand to read the scriptures and then sit to discuss it. Just as Jesus did in verse 20, he rolled this up the scroll, handed it back to the attendant, and sat down. And then all eyes were on him in the synagogue, and they looked at him intently. Because the rabbi would then go to speak about the scripture, to speak what it means. And so, again, none of this is unusual so far, but here's where it gets very unusual. Now, remember, as we discussed last week, Jesus began his ministry 
on a year of Jubilee. And this scripture is from Isaiah 61. This is a year of Jubilee scripture. So it's not even uncommon for this scripture to be read during the year of Jubilee because everybody in Israel, when they hear this scripture, they're thinking year of Jubilee. This talks about the year of Jubilee. Here's where it would have caught them totally off guard. Is G it says, then he began to speak to them. The scripture you just heard has been fulfilled this very day. And so Jesus is telling them that, they're, that the ultimate fulfillment of this scripture comes from him. Now, this would have taken them way back. This would have, this, they would have, you know, this would have been almost blasphemy because they know, remember, the people of Israel, their year of Jubilee, their, their fulfillment comes when the Messiah comes to sit on the throne. And so this would have absolutely just shattered their understanding of the Messiah, their understanding of the scriptures. And it says that, you know, that, that, that they were outraged by this. And so what I want to do and why I started here is I want to discuss how is it that Jesus is the one to usher in the year of Jubilee? How can we prove to the Jewish people? How can the Jewish people know that their Messiah is Jesus and that he brought this year of Jubilee for them? And so. Again, remember the year of Jubilee, as we talked about, this is when the Messiah sits on the throne. This is when the rightful ruler is in Israel during the millennial kingdom. This is what the year of Jubilee points to. Remember, the year of Jubilee is also a time where the property was redeemed to the original owner. Slaves were set free. Debts were canceled. A clear picture of the messianic kingdom. So now what I want to do is I want to discuss the two laws that we talked about, the law of the title deed and the law of the kinsman redeemer. To show that Christ, you know, his message is to proclaim the year of Jubilee. That's that's the message of Christ. This is how he began his public ministry. And so what I want to do is, is talk about these two laws and see how they point us to Christ. We'll look at the spiritual aspect of the law of the title deed, the law of the kinsman redeemer, to see how it points us to Christ. And so let's look first at the law of the title deed. Now, the law of the title deed, let, let's spiritualize this for a minute. There's two title deeds, the sealed one and the unsealed one. And so to have these two title deeds is very important, and it, and it really shows who's in ultimate control. So let's look at the present condition of this earth, this earth as a whole. Let's look at the title deed of the earth. And so the, this God created everything. I mean, it's very clear from Scripture. He did it in six days. He created everything on earth. And then in Genesis 1... Genesis 1, beginning in, well, actually, we'll just be reading verse 26. It talks about him giving man dominion of the earth. So he gave man dominion of the earth. So in Genesis 1, 26, it says, Then God said, Let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, and all the animals on the earth, the small Animals that scurry along the ground. And so when God created the earth, he gave man that dominion of the earth. He gave them control of the earth. But he gave them the unsealed title deed. Because the sealed one, remember, always remains with the original owner. And so man was given the unsealed title deed, which gave us temporary control of the land for a temporary period of time. But you know the story. Man sinned. Adam ate, Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, bringing sin into this world and breaking our fellowship with God. Well, what happened when, when Adam and Eve sinned is it created a debt which they could not pay, a debt which Satan controls. And it's a debt we could not pay. And so because of our sin and because we couldn't pay it, we gave the unsealed title deed because it's, you know, it's a way of paying for your debt. If you can't pay your debt with money, you have to give up your land or become slaves. Well, our debt was so great that we had to do both. We gave Satan the unsealed title deed. So the land which we had to control was given over to Satan because we could not cover our debt of sin. And then we also sold ourselves into slavery because as it says in John 8, 34, John 8, 34, that sin, once you once you sin, once you serve sin in John 8, 34, it says, Jesus replied, I tell you the truth that everyone who sins is a slave of sin. And so not only did we give control of this earth over to Satan to cover our debt, but our debt was so great that we all became slaves of Satan, slaves of sin because of our sin nature. 
And now you could say, well, I've never sinned. I'm a good person. I don't have this slavery to sin. Romans 3.23 says, for everyone has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so now Satan has the unsealed deed to the earth, the unsealed title deed. And that's why John can say in 1 John 5.19, you know, people are always like, well, you know, God's in control of this earth. Satan is the one that's running this earth. And in 1 John 5.19, John says, We know that we are children of God and that the world around us is under the control of the evil one. That evil one being Satan. That's, you know, that's very clear in Scripture. Satan is the evil one. And so the world around us is under the control of the evil one. So man no longer has dominion of the earth. Man gave the dominion over to Satan by giving him the unsealed title deed because we could not pay the debt of our sin. Just like Israel did. If they couldn't pay the debt, they had to sell their property. However, there's two deeds. There's the unsealed deed and the sealed deed. And God has always maintained control of the sealed deed because he is the one that created the earth. Remember, the sealed deed always remains with the original owner. And so even though Satan has dominion, it is only temporary and conditional because God is the one who's in ultimate control. And so when I say Satan's controlling this world, I'm not saying that God doesn't have control because God has that ultimate control. But what I am saying is because of how God set it up with us, we gave our sin, we gave our control over to Satan. But God always has the sealed title deed. And we're going to see that in just a little bit. Just, But know that God having the sealed title deed means that he has the absolute control and he always maintains the absolute control. Satan was given a temporary title deed that allowed temporary control on conditional terms. And so that's the first law that I want to focus on, that law of the title deed. So knowing that God has always maintained ultimate control and that the world has always ultimately been his. The second law, which points us directly to Christ, again, is this law of the kinsman redeemer. Now, this law of the kinsman redeemer is one of my favorite laws to discuss because it so clearly points to Christ. It, it's just, it's wonderful. And so we see that Christ is our kinsman redeemer from Revelation 5. So if you turn with me now to Revelation 5, and this is the chapter that I've been so excited to get to. But in Revelation 5, John is, is remember, he was just raptured to heaven to, to see the throne room of God. And so in Revelation 5, it says, Then I saw a scroll in the right hand of the one who is sitting on the throne. There was written, there was... There was writing on the inside and outside of the scroll, and it was sealed with seven seals. So here's the scrolls on the in the hand of the one sitting on the throne. And this is clearly God the Father. And what he's holding is the sealed title deed. You see, it's always been his. And so a very interesting note about this sealed title deed is it says it has writing on the inside and the out. All ancient scrolls only had writing on one side. The only exception was in the case of ancient title deeds. And the reason it had writing on the inside and outside is because the sealed deed, what oftentimes the owner would do is because he gave away the unsealed deed, the, what he would do is he would write the terms of the unsealed deed on the outside of the sealed deed so it could be read without opening the seals. And so what was written on it was just usually a summary of what the property was, a summary of the conditions and agreements. And then the most important thing that was written on the unsealed deed and on the outside of the sealed deed, you know, writing on both inside and out, was the price of redemption. This was always written on the outside of the sealed deed so that everyone could know the price of redemption. And it was very important to keep the sealed deed sealed until the original owner maintained control of the land again. Because if the seals were broken, it would become null and void. And so that's why they would write the unsealed deed, why they would write the terms on the outside of the sealed deed, because you can't break the seals of the sealed deed. Additionally, all ancient documents usually only had one seal, except for title deeds. Archaeologists and historians have shown that title deeds are the only document written on both sides and the only ones that sealed with seven seals. And so this is very clearly a picture of this of a the sealed deed to the earth, the one that's always been in God's hands. And it's a strong angel 
It says in verse 2, And I saw a strong angel who shouted with a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals of the scroll and open it? And verse 3, But no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open it and read it. And so this is a problem. The strong angel pronounces, Who is worthy to open the seal? You see, there's only one person worthy to open the seal of the sealed deed. It is, it is the kinsman redeemer. He's the one, once he buys back the land, then he is the one that opens the seal to show who the original owner is and give that land back to him. And so in order to be able to open the deed, you had to meet the terms of redemption that was written on the outside of the deed. And so the strong angel, it, it makes an emphasis of saying a strong angel, not a weak angel, not an ordinary angel, but probably the strongest angel in heaven said, who can open this? Because even though he was the strong one, he could not open it. And it says no one was found worthy. And that's because nobody could meet the condition. Nobody could meet the price of redemption written on the outside of the deed. And so in verse four, it says then, I began to weep bitterly because no one was found worthy to open the scroll and read it. John is distraught. That's because John knows that if nobody opens the title deed, if nobody pays the price of redemption, then Satan maintains control. You see, once the price of redemption is paid, the only time it is put into effect is when that original title deed is opened. That's when the land goes back to the original owner. That's when the slaves are set free. That's when the kinsman redeemer's price has gone into effect, when he opens the title deed. And so John is weeping bitterly because he knows, he sees the state of the world, and he knows it's not going to get any better without the kinsman redeemer. And the only way to have the kinsman redeemer is to have somebody worthy to pay the price of redemption. And so let's talk about what the price of redemption. What is the price of redemption for everybody on the earth and for the earth itself? Because remember, the kinsman redeemer, he buys back the slaves and the land. The price of redemption is made very clear. A sinless person who can take on the sins of the whole world. That is the price of redemption. And nobody is found worthy because nobody has done this. And so then John begins to weep. But then John is given hope. John is shown our kinsman redeemer, the one who's paid the price of redemption for us. And it says, but one of the 24 elders, this is verse 5, said to me, stop weeping. Look, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the heir to David's throne, has won the victory. He is worthy to open the scroll in its seven seals. And then it says, then I saw a lamb that looked as if it had been slaughtered. But it was now standing between the throne of the four and the four living beings and among the 24 elders. He had seven horns, which is all powerful, and seven eyes, which is all knowing. And the eyes represent the sevenfold spirit, which God has sent into the world. It says he stepped forward and took the scroll from the right hand of the one sitting on the throne. And when he took the scroll, it says the four living beings and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. And everyone had a heart. And they held golden bowls filled with incense, which are the prayers of God's people. So our prayers are held in golden bowls. But the lamb, this is clearly Christ, who was called the lion, the heir, the root of David. But the lamb who was slaughtered, he was the only one who paid the price of redemption, dying on the cross for us to redeem us. You know, the law of the kinsman redeemer explains why Christ had to become a man, because only a kin could pay our redemptive, our, our redemption. That's why it's a kinsman redeemer. Only man could pay for man's sins. So he had to become man in order to buy us back. But he was also at the same time God. And so I just want to just want to clarify for a minute, kinsman redeemer, what it means to redeem is it means to buy out of talking specifically about slavery. You see, our kinsman redeemer, and the Hebrew word for a redeemer is, or for kinsman redeemer is go el, which means to deliver or to rescue. So Jesus, who bought us out of something, who came to deliver and rescue us, bought not only this land back, but he paid our debt of sin and freed us from slavery. He freed us from slavery. 
And it was a high price that he paid. In fact, 1 Peter 1, verse 18 says, For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And the ransom he paid was not mere gold or silver. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God, our kinsman redeemer, willing to pay the full price for us to bring us out of slavery and then to redeem the earth so that we can have a home. You see, that is why Christ can pronounce the year of Jubilee. That is why Christ is worthy to open the scroll and he will open it. In fact, it's talks in Revelation that each time he opens a seal, it pours out judgment upon the earth. This will be during the tribulation period. And yes, our price was of redemption was paid on the cross nearly 2,000 years ago. But until the deed is opened, the price is null and void. You know, the earth cannot go back to the original owner until the deed is opened. And so that's why Satan is still in control, even though the price has been paid, because until the title deed is opened, the, the owner of the unsealed deed remains in control. But there will come a day when the title deed is opened and Christ announces the year of Jubilee that the rightful owner is here to claim the earth and then he will set up his kingdom and we will live with him. You see, we were bought out of slavery. The earth was redeemed by our kinsman redeemer. And so what should our response to this be? I want to close with this. What should our response to our kinsman redeemer be? And it talks about that in 1 Corinthians 6. 1 Corinthians 6. I just want to again discuss our response. 1 Corinthians 6 beginning in verse Let's see, verse 19, I believe. So if you turn with your Bibles to 1 Corinthians 6, our kinsman redeemer, what should our response be to him? Yep, verse 19, it says, don't you realize that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God? You don't belong to yourself for God bought you with a high price. So you must honor God with our body. And so, our response to being bought out of sin means that we should honor and serve God with everything that we are. Because our kinsman redeemer ransomed us. Christ became our kin to buy us back, to pay the heavy price of death on the cross for us. And so our response should be to serve this kinsman redeemer who has redeemed us. Because if you do not accept his redemption, if you do not serve him as the kinsman redeemer, that means that you are still trapped in slavery. That means that you will have to pay the price of redemption yourself and you cannot pay it because that price is a sinless sacrifice. And so you will have to face judgment before God unless you accept your kinsman redeemer. So accept your kinsman redeemer today. He has bought back the earth and he has bought back you. And yes, he died for everyone's sins. But if the kinsman redeemer, if Christ only had to redeem you, he would have. And so today, won't you accept our kinsman redeemer? Amen. And just a reminder for a future podcast, you know, we're, we're, I'm so enjoying our time together in scripture. But if you have any questions that you would like to get answered about the church or Christianity or the Bible, make sure to put a comment or, or email me. And until next week, honor the kinsman redeemer. You have been redeemed out of slavery and this world has been redeemed and God will create a new home on this earth for us, a, a millennial kingdom. And then at the end of the age, we will have a new heaven and a new earth to spend eternity with our kinsman redeemer. The year of Jubilee is coming because the redeemer has paid the price. Amen.